Hi, today we're gonna discuss the Heckscher Olin theory of trade. This um, PowerPoint is brought to us by my professor, Dr. Bernabette West at Barry University. So, who gains and who loses from trade? Let's just click right here. So, so as you can read right now, there's a basic um, overview. Um, uh, how it says that the Heckscher Olin theory generates realistic predictions about trade effects incomes of groups. Such groups are labor, landlords, and employers. Now, um, the Heckscher Olin theory was developed by two economists. Um, Heckscher started the theory, and but he unfortunately he died, and Olin, his um, student and predecessor, finished the theory. Thus, the name Heckscher Olin theory in memory of both of them. Now, this theory is very effective and is much better than the um, the Adam Smith and Ricardo's theory of trade, the comparative and absolute advantage. So, um, in the short run, the Hexerolian theory um, states that the gains and losses from a trade who which, which is open to which open to trade are divided by the output sectors. All the groups, such as landlords, which earn rent, laborers, which earn wages, and employers, which earn a profit, in the expanding sector will gain in the short run, and all groups in the declining sector will lose in the short run. Now, based on the example given to us by the PowerPoint. Now, um, it says, assume in the U.S. that land is relatively abundant and labor is relatively scarce compared to the rest of the world. Well, so U.S. has a, an abundance of land and a shortage of um, labor, and the rest of the world has a abundance of labor and short of land. So the U.S. will produce wheat, which is land intensive, and the rest of the world will produce cloth, which is labor intensive. Now, if wheat is the expanding sectors, then the um, landlords will, in the short run, gain and the laborers in the short run will lose and in the rest of the world the opposite the employers will um, gain and the laborers will and the landlords I'm sorry will lose now let's see this analysis in the long run now according to the Heckscher Olin theory the factors in the long run will move between each other so they will be equalized in the groups such as landlords the employers and the uh, companies so all differences between that were in the short run will now be eliminated so what does this actually mean that in the long run all the landlords in the wheat will be earning the same rental rates and our laborers in the cloth sector will say will have the same real wage rates no matter what sector they're currently in now first analysis Owners in the factors that are used extensively in the expanded sector will gain regardless of the sector of employment and the owners in the factor less intensively used will lose regardless of the employment sector. Now, example given here is if the expanding sector is land intensive, in the long run the rental rate for land will rise and the wage rate for labor will fall in all sectors. Pretty simple enough, that will be for the US and the wheat sector. And if the expanding sector is labor intensive, cloth or the rest of the world in the long run the rental rates for land will fall and the wage rate for labor will rise in all sectors this um this graph actually summarizes everything which is done extremely well uh it states right here um let's say initial prices for the u.s the wheat is cheap and the cloth is expensive since wheat is the more abundant and we have more land intensive nation than wheat will be cheap and cloth will be relatively expensive. In the rest of the world, we will be expensive and cloth will be cheap since they have a majority and of cloth since they're labor intensive. Now, economies open up to trade, of course, the US will export wheat and import cloth and the rest of the world will import wheat and export cloth. So prices this is what generally happens when you import uh, a product the cloth the price will go down domestically but when you export a product the prices will generally go up 
in the domestic country. Same situation we see in the rest of the world. Now the production responds to prices. Pro um, produce more wheat, produce less cloth. So like partially specializing in wheat if we have a, a curved, not linear pro uh, production possibility frontier analysis and in the rest of the world produce less wheat and produce more cloth. So they're specializing more in cloth. So now this is the crucial step, the national market um, change. For each unit of cloth sacrificed, many workers and a small amount of land will be laid off. Extra wheat demands few workers and much land. So the rise for landlords will increase while the labor wage rate will decrease, like we said. And in the rest of the world, for each unit of wheat sacrificed, must much land and few workers are going to be laid off. The extra cloth demands many workers and little land since it will be labor intensive. So labor will rise and landlords will fall. Now, we just set this right here. In the long run, the product prices equalize between the countries. So the net gains for those uh, for both countries with the different effects on the different groups. For example, here in this scenario, the winners of the US are the US landlords and the foreign workers. We see that right here. Since US landlords, since the wheat, you're specializing in wheat and the rest of the workers, since you're specializing in cloth. Now, the losers are the in the US, the, the workers for the cloth and in the rest of the world, the wheat. So as you can see, the Hector, Hector Owen theory demonstrate how in the, in the short run there might be some advantage in the expanding sector but in the long run it all comes to uh, equilibrium here we see another example of this um, much like a comparative advantage table of the Ricardian theory um, in the wheat landlords will gain and laborers will gain in the United States in cloth, uh, the lose and lose. This is in the short run first, and then the rest of the world landlords will lose and laborers will lose in the wheat sector, and cloth will gain and gain. Now, in the long run, this is what happens: the landlords in wheat will gain, and in cloth will gain, while the laborers will lose in both sectors. Um, and in the rest of the world, the landlords will lose in wheat and cloth, and the laborers will gain in both sectors easy enough this is, uh, has been a simple introduction to the hector olin theory the hector olin theory has more uh, bra uh, branches to it like the stoper samuelton theorem the specialized factor pattern and the factor price equalization we just notice all these three very intro like but um later on i will post a video on the three major specializations so you all can get a better grip on the on the subject at hand. Well, thanks for watching.